lift up your voice and bless the king bless the king bless the king lift up your voice and bless the king the king of glory the one who deserves our worship from the depths of our heart let us ascribe greatness to our god the rock his word is perfect and all his ways are just and justice he is the god of faithfulness and without injustice good and upright is he let us ascribe greatness to him tonight we bless your holy name we give you glory jesus we thank you for the privilege of access by the blood of the lamb we have access into the most holy place the very presence of god thank you thank you thank you we declare this meeting open tonight we ask for access into the very throne room of god we ask that by reason of divine access, you grant us access in every expression of our lives. We ask that as we gain access in life, we will stay within godly boundaries. We ask that your name be exalted and glorified. Influence lives. Influence destinies. Influence situations. Bring the stamp of heaven upon our earthly experiences and let your son be exalted and glorified hallelujah amen amen please you may be seated thank you musicians thank you so much god bless you please you may be seated in the presence of the living god We have been on a spiritual exercise in this house. We call it mountain top. The essence is that a physical mountain is an elevated place. And it gets high above human um, habitations. You don't find a mountain where um, people dwell on the apex of the mountain by reason of the natural weather conditions. It can be very cold up there. 20,000 feet above sea level, 30,000 feet above sea level, and you find mountain, mountain ranges at such heights. It can take lives if um, those who go on such expeditions to go to the mountain top, it, unless they are well skilled and well trained and well prepared, they spend years to prepare. If you read about the lives and the testimonies of people who have conquered mountains, like Mount Everest, you see that it takes years of preparation. It takes skill and skills. It takes teamwork. And I believe these things, they have their um, spiritual essence in our lives as we embark on this mountaintop experience because we are not doing this alone. We are tapping into the grace of this brother and the grace of this pastor and the grace of this deacon and the grace of this sister and so that as we engage the teamwork consciously and intentionally, we are able to act ascend to a height which by ourselves we will not have been able to attain unto. And so I'd like us not to handle these few moments um, with kid gloves. Um, just like you read in the Old Testament, coming into the very presence of God can be a matter of life and death. You do it right, your life is preserved. You don't do it right, the life can be endangered. It can be a fatal experience. So you'll see with the priest, the high priest, when he goes into the very presence of God, a long rope is tied around his waist with bells that dangle. The bells are not just to um, ring bells. They're also to create sound of life. So that as he goes into the most holy place, the sign that he's still alive is that those who are not able to enter into that holy place, they still hear the dangling of the bells, the jangling of the bells. And so that shows that the priest, his life is preserved, he's doing things according to divine standards and divine expectations. The moment for a sustained period, the, belly, the bells are not jangling, it's a sign of life. And no one there rushes in into that presence <laughs> because it's hallowed territory. 
it's um, the very presence of God. So what they do when they don't hear the sound of the bells is to use the long rope that extends into the outer court to drag out the high priest. So these things have their symbolisms and they have their imports. Now going to the mountaintop, in this context, it's a corporate exercise. It's not what you do alone. Yes, you may have your individual needs. You may have your individual desires, your individual goals, but latch onto the grace of the other. Latch in, on, into the grace of the other. And let's have what we call a network, a teamwork, and so that you know, grace may be added to grace. Tonight, I'd like to share with us from God's word. Um, this marks the third day of this mountaintop. We're going 12 days, 12 days from the symbols of scripture. 12 serves for um, foundations. When the foundation of the new Jerusalem was laid in Revelation, there were 12 parts of it. And then 12 also serves uh, from scriptures as a number for government. So foundation and government, they are very um, related and... Um, yeah, they're very related because also government, he said the government shall be upon his shoulder. So 12 tribes of Israel in the Old Testament, 12 apostles who joined with Jesus in the government of the kingdom in his earthly ministry. So 12, and so over these 12 days, we trust God that we'll be able to lay the, the foundation for God's work in our lives for this year. And then we'll trust God that also the government of God will be established in our lives for this year and beyond. Tonight, I'd like to share for a moment on what I call grace for access. We're emphasizing and we're bringing to attention in this um, early stage of the year, God spoke a word to us in the place of waiting on him that this year for us will be a year of access. And I believe that access is on two dimensions. Access into the very presence of God without which you may not be guaranteed of divine backing in the affairs of your life. You want to enjoy the days of heaven upon the earth and then you need divine backing. And Moses realized the importance of God's backing, God's presence. He had been to the mountain of the Lord. He had spent 40 days there. He saw the difference the presence of the Lord had brought into his life. You read in Exodus chapter 24, God told Moses, he said, come up upon the mountain and be there. Verse 12, Exodus chapter 24, come up upon the mountain and be there and I will give you. So instruments for leadership, instruments for governance, influ instruments for laying kingdom and government foundations for the nation of Israel and the people of God were given to Moses because he encountered God upon that mountain. That mountain was not just an elevated platform in the natural, it was a place where divinity uh, met up with humanity. It was a place where Moses in his human humanity but paying the appropriate price met up with the divine one. And so the instruments for governing the nation were given to him. But he also recognized, especially the second time, as he came down from the mountain, he did not know that he had been changed. He had been transformed. That's one of the things the presence of the Lord can do in our lives. If you gain access into that dimension, you will not really know, you may not really know the level of transition, the level of transformation your life has encountered and experienced. It is in the course of your uh, interface with other human beings who have not come into that encounter, who have not come into that experience, they begin to realize this guy speaks differently. This guy thinks differently. This guy functions differently. This guy is calm, even under storms. There are the raging seas, boisterous um, waters, and yet this guy is at rest. So they notice that being with God had brought a change upon Moses. They saw it upon his face. Even before he started to give to them the commandments and the instructions of how to govern the nation, they could not look upon his face. The glory of God was all over him. It was a proof. It was a seal that this guy had been with God. He had been to the presence of the Lord and his life was preserved. And I trust God. I believe God that over these 12 days, you, as you get up on the mountain and you go up high up on the mountain and be there. That was the language. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 12. He said, and be there. And as you stay in that presence, you are not in a hurry to rush out. You are not in a hurry to do your own things. You just want to hang in, in the presence of the Lord and stay in the very presence of God. 
I am persuaded that after these 12 days, God will begin to do things in your life that people will notice. The way you reason, the way you function, the wisdom with which God uh, will, will operate in your life, the anointing with which you will operate in the affairs of this life. So when you recognize, Moses recognized the difference, the presence of God, when he had not been to the presence of God, and then after he had been to the presence of God, and he saw that ordinances were given, the wisdom was given, the glory of God was upon him, and then he recognized, this is a better place. So he said now, when God was speaking to him i want to take you to the land of promise but i think your people they're rebellious bunch they don't obey my ordinances they are full of complaining i don't want to move with them lest i destroy them along the way if they steer me up he said i will send my angel to go with you but moses knew the difference between angel and god he had been to the presence of god he had paid the price for access into the very presence of the almighty he said he did not even talk about angels he had, you, when you have tested the real thing, you, when you have tested gold, you have taken from gold, you don't want silver. You don't want, if you are used to taking first, second will look like punishment, it will look like they demoted you. So he had been to the presence of God. He had spent time before the presence of the Almighty, the maker of the heavens and the earth. And now God was promising angel. Ah, God, we've tested the real thing. He said, except your presence goes with us, we don't want to leave this place. And I feel Moses came to such conviction and such passion of negotiation because he had tasted the real thing. And angels would not be enough. Sometimes we settle for gold. We settle for gold because we have not seen God. We settle for things because we have not met the owner of things. We settle for human recognition because we have not tasted some levels of divine recognition. When you taste the real thing, Jesus had tasted the real thing. He had been made king from birth. He was born king. Matthew chapter 2. And so he, as by reason of that dimension, born king, raised king, operating as king, he walked in the miraculous. He demonstrated power. And so he fed multitudes with bread in John chapter 6. When they saw his ability, the Bible says in John chapter 6 that they wanted to take him by force and make him a king. But he had tasted the real thing. He had tasted divine enthronement. He had tasted of divine royalty. What will man offer? And you see sometimes our lives are on that level. We seek, we press, we pay prices, we negotiate, we bribe, we offer things to get human things, human elevation, human recognition, human endorsement. But you see, if you have tested the real thing, if you have tested from the most high, all these other lower levels will lose their appeal to you. And that's why I want to challenge us on a first level here. The presence of the Lord is a place every living should aspire to experience. Whatever the price you have to pay, if the 12 days will not be sufficient for you, if you don't have some landmarks, some milestones in your walk with God, you can extend your time of waiting upon the Lord beyond the 12 days. Because if you meet him, nothing in this life, will satisfy. I had a revered man of God that I know and regard and respect, my pastor. He said many years ago, God gave him an encounter and took him, um, gave him an encounter and took him on a journey to heaven. He said when he came back, even as a young Christian leader, he said when he came back, he was not willing to remain on this earth anymore. No, no wealth, no, no fame, no might of this world will compare to what he has seen in just a few moments. And you see, I want to use this to challenge every one of us. The presence of God is awesome. The presence of God is what every one of us should be willing to pay the price for. Because when you get to that place, grace is offered in that place. Supernatural ability is offered in that place. You see, maybe time will permit me tonight to begin to show us how you see when you locate the presence of God, you rub off on that presence. The presence of God rubs off on you. There are many benefits 
many residual benefits, many things that will rub off on your life that, friends, you can use to have advantage and gain advantage in the affairs of this life. Hallelujah. And so when you gain access into the presence of God, one of the things that encounter will leave you with is what we call grace. Grace. And I like to explain grace, some attributes of grace on a few, le- on, on a few levels here tonight. Grace is a supernatural endowment given only by God. Grace is a divine en- endowment. It's not just to work miracles, it's a dimension of it. It's not just to preach and teach, it's a dimension of it. But you see, everyone needs grace. The housewife needs grace. If the dimension of heaven will influence your affairs on earth, as a housewife, as a trader, as a, an artisan, as a public official, as a family person, as a mother, a parent, a father, whatever your profession, whatever your endeavors, in this earthly realm, when you touch the presence of God, he leaves you with what we call grace. Moses enjoyed grace. He encountered grace. That is why he said, look, for the journey ahead, God, I don't want any substitute. I don't want anything else if your presence will not go with us. So quickly here tonight, I want to bring to attention quickly some attributes of grace that is needed to handle the affairs of life. Grace that you can enjoy when you connect with the presence of God. When you lay hold on that which is behind the veil in the language of Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 to 20 it tells us how by the blood of Jesus we are able to have access to that which is behind the veil the veil symbolized the separation from the holy place in the tabernacle of Moses from the most holy place in the most holy place you had the, um, the cherubims the winged angels you had the mercy seat you had uh, uh, um, the very presence of God only in the holy place. So we are saying the veil here was like what separated entire humanity from the very presence of God. When you lay hold on that which is behind the presence, you will enjoy grace. Your grace will rub off on your life. And so quickly here tonight, some attributes of grace that you need for access in life. I'd like us to understand here to start with, Grace is also known as the anointing. In the language of scripture, the anointing. It's also known as unction. Unction anointing. It talks about a smearing. So that it's like the same way you rub cream. It's like the same way you rub oil. It's like lubricating a system. Lubricating a body. So the anointing is an expression of the grace of God. Is a feature of the grace of God. The unction, you will see that language in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20. He said you have an unction. Or in the Greek, it's called ungu. I mean, another English term for it is called unguents. It's called charisma. You have an unction from the Holy One whereby you know all things. So the anointing and unction is basically talking about a smearing, a rubbing of on. Why here? So that when you get into that holy presence, it is that anointing that comes upon you that makes God not to see you as flesh. I've taught that in this house a few times before. That makes your flesh not to appear before the Lord. When you enter that presence and you are accepted of the Lord, he brings his oil upon you. That is what preserves you before the presence of the Almighty. That is what preserves you before in that holy presence of God. And every one of us, in the affairs of life so that we bring that divine presence and that divine influence into the affairs of our lives we need the anointing one feature of grace is the anointing jesus was anointed acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth when he paid the price when he met the mark the oil came upon him he was not always anointed the baby in the manger was not anointed. The baby um, carried to escape to Egypt from the, the wrath of Herod was not anointed. But as he paid the price and met the mark, several things he had to do to meet the mark. But eventually when he met the mark, the oil of heaven came upon him. The grace of God came upon him. 
at that baptism in Jordan by and John the Baptist heavens opened the spirit came descended on him and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove and so Jesus was anointed and from that moment the Bible says he went about doing good healing all who are oppressed of the devil the anointing is one of the expressions is one of the attributes of grace are you still in here tonight are you still in here tonight all right so and we need to cover the anointing if jesus needed to be anointed you would need to be anointed you'll see also about david psalm 89 verse 20 god was saying i have found one who is mighty i've made him a king i have anointed him let's see that psalm 89 and verse 20. psalm 89 and verse 20. He says here in verse 20 quickly, I have found my servant David with my holy oil. That is talking, describing the anointing again. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. And he begins to show us the effect of the anointing. We'll get back to that in a bit. So you see here, David was anointed. A shepherd boy from an obscure community, from an obscure family. But when the anointing came upon him, in a short while, he was recommended to kings. In a short while, he dislodged the greatest enemy of the nation of Israel. In a short while, he dismantled Goliath. In a short while, he had favor with the king. He became a mercenary and, um, and soldier. He led a mercenary army. He did great exploits. Why? Because he was anointed. Daniel for statesmanship in Babylon, Daniel was anointed. So no matter, maybe for scholarship, maybe for business, maybe for your profession, you need that oil of heaven to smear upon you so that when you speak, when you write, when you carry out whatever your function, you are not operating not just based on scholarship, what you are taught in school, you have an edge that the anointing brings into your life. Remember, the anointing is not just for falling under power, it's not just for preaching, the anointing will give you uncommon level of knowledge, uncommon level of wisdom. He said, for example, you have an unction from the Holy One, whereby what? First John chapter 2 verse 20, you know. So the anointing, one of the effects of the anointing is a supernatural ability to know. Not just to know the Bible, not just to know your pastor, not just to know the way to your church service, but to know various issues of life. You have an unction from the Holy One whereby you know what? All things. Business things, profession things, religious things, current affairs things, whereby you know all things. He said in our place in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things. Through Christ, who does what? Who strengthens me. The strengthening there is the effect of the anointing. Hallelujah. So attribute of grace, the grace that is needed for access, not just access to God, but access to the realms of life, the fields of influence, access into marriage, access into marital bliss, not just enduring marriage not just enduring life but enjoying reigning in life by one even jesus one attribute of the of grace is the anointing furthermore quickly we're talking here about the grace is also known as the anointing it's also known as unction i also like to say the grace of god is also known as favor favor unlike with the unction or the anointing that can make you wise can make you work miracles can make you affect things can make you affect situations can make you affect people favor has to do particularly with people favor is a favorable disposition you can attract by reason of the grace of god on your life people kings God Almighty himself, strangers, they are just favorably disposed towards you. Not because you are the best, not because you are the most competent, not because you are uh, the uh, most endowed. People are not even able to explain why. Why, you, why have you been singled out for the job, singled out for the business? Why have you been singled out for that gift? Why have you been singled out for the promotion? Why have you been singled out for, for, for elevation? 
um, many a times, people who are recipients of um, favor, the people who favor them are not even able to explain why. Why? Because it is an attribute of grace, a supernatural ability that comes upon a person, a family, that makes people to just desire to do them good, to honor them, to bless them, to elevate them. Are you still in here? All right. And you will see here, still going back to Jesus, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2, verse 40, as he grew, as the child, the Bible says he grew. He grew in size. He grew in stature. He grew in wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. That grace was not in the dimension of the anointing. That one came much later. That one came after his baptism at the rivers of Jordan. The grace there is charisma. It's favor. It's in favor, I mean, it's caris. Sorry, excuse me. Caris. Because I remember it has to do with the name of my daughter. It's caris. That uh, favorable disposition of people, God, kings, strangers, they just desire to do you good. They just desire to help you. You are a complete stranger, but something is telling them to help you in particular. So the Bible says about Jesus, even as a youngster, as a child, remember the one that was anointed was a man. But here was a son. But here as a child who was still growing. The Bible says the grace of God. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40. The grace of God was upon him. A favorable conditioning. A favorable disposition. Of men of God towards him. And then verse 52. Verse 52, Luke chapter 2, still about Jesus. Remember verse 52 was when Jesus was just about um, 13 years of age. Was it 12 or 13? Uh, I'm not remembering those details now when he went to the temple. But look at it in verse 52. And Jesus increased because he started out the journey of wisdom and now he increased the more. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, physical development and spiritual stature, spiritual development and in favor with God and men. When you check the root meaning of the favor there, it's exactly the same root meaning as the grace that is described in verse 40. Showing you again that one attribute of grace is favor, favorable disposition. And I speak over people in here. I don't know how people have treated you. I don't know how people have related to you. Kings, strangers. You, it's like so, you always meet a roadblock. What people, other people will easily get away with when it comes to you is like a roadblock. It's like a, a wedge. It's like a line that cannot be crossed. You probe it, you grope around for it, but you are just not able to cross that line. That line into elevation, that line into fruitfulness, that line into breakthrough. But I stand in my place of authority tonight and I speak over someone in this house. May the grace of God come upon your life. Grace in the dimension of favor, favorable disposition. How God Almighty was favorably disposed to Jesus. Men saw him, they delighted to do him good. They desire to do him good. I speak over your life. Every ungodly limiting influence. Every demonic limiting influence. You cannot explain it. You read better. You did better. But somehow you are more qualified. But you are less appealing. Tonight, the yoke is broken. The snare is broken. I speak into your life. Grace that will grant you access into the hearts of kings. Into territories he that will deny you into possibilities opportunities he that will deny you i speak tonight may the grace of god come upon your life grace that will make your life appealing grace that will make your abilities appealing grace that will make your name appealing grace that will make people favorably disposed towards you receive grace tonight receive grace tonight receive grace tonight in the name of jesus favorable disposition People will just search the whole pile of files and they're not getting to the base. They're not looking from the top, but somewhere closer to the base, they just pull out your file and say, this is the one we are recommending. I speak over lives. I speak over people. I speak over businesses represented on site, online. May the favor of the Lord locate you. May the favor of the Lord announce you. May the favor of the Lord distinguish you. May the favor of the Lord announce you. In the name of Jesus. Favor. One of the expressions of the grace of God. 
And people will just desire. The Bible says, and King Solomon writing in Proverbs chapter 3, he said in, from verse 3 to verse 4, when you bind mercy and truth around your neck, you inscribe it on the tables of your heart, you live by mercy. You are disposed towards people for truth in mercy. He said, friends, you will attract goodwill and favor. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 4. You will attract favor with God. Amen. And King David also writing in Psalm 5 and verse 12. It talks about God will encompass you with favor. Round about. He will encompass you with favor as a shield. You know what a shield is? A shield is a weapon of war. A shield is a weapon of defense in the war front. A shield is to ward off the enemy, to ward off the arrows shot at you, to ward off the, the, the blows of the sword um, um, swung at you. But here he says, favor can also be a protective shield to bounce back the arrows of the enemy, to push back the swords of, of hell um, launched against you. He said, with favor, the Lord will surround you, will encompass you with favor as a shield. Hmm. And so you will see, favor here will not only attract good for you, favor can also repel what is undesirable in your life. And that's why I want you, as you get into this journey of this year, as you position yourself and prepare for the journey of this year, how you need favor, that expression of grace that will make kings, that will make God, that will make strangers to desire to do you good. But also favor as a weapon of defense to ward off the devices of the enemy against your life. Hallelujah. Grace can also be called the power of the spirit, but I won't dwell on that tonight. And what will grace do for you? One, grace is given only by God. Grace is given only by God. Recognize, young lady, yeah, recognize, um, uh, accomplished businessman. You want to enjoy grace in addition to what you have already accomplished? You want grace to distinguish you in addition to your natural abilities, natural intellect, human connections? You are still believing for grace. You want the divine dimension. Oh, to overwhelm, to be much bigger and louder and to amplify all of your other human attributes. Friends, grace comes only from the living God. God uses human channels. God may use your boss in your office as a channel of favor, as a channel of uh, 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 favorable disposition. And God may use your pastor to minister grace to you, to bring forth a healing anointing, to bring forth healing in your life, to bless your marriage, to bring prophetic direction into your life. God can use a servant of God. But we are channels. Every human vessel used to convey grace is a channel. That the excellency of the power may be unto God and not unto us. We are channels of grace. We may be carriers of grace, but we are not owners of the grace. We may be vessels of grace, but we are only channels. We are conduit pipes. We don't have the capacity to retain. God is the one who is able to supply. God is the one who is able to withdraw. Samson started to overrate himself. He said, I will shake myself as at other times. He did not know that he was a channel. He thought he could move it and shake it and release it and withhold it. As he didn't fit, he did not know that he was a channel, a conduit pipe. The Bible says in Judges chapter 16 verse 20, he did not know that the spirit of the Lord, the giver of grace, had departed from him. May we not get into things. God may be the one to anoint you, but he can also take it away. May you not get into things, get into thoughts, get into associations, get into fraternities, get into uh, uh, activities that will make the oil. People knew you that when this guy is in his elements, the grace is awesome. When this lady is in her elements, the grace to minister is awesome. The grace to make presentations is profound. The grace to negotiate on behalf of multi-billion dollar businesses is uncommon. May you never step beyond the boundary 
That is why we also say in talking about access, we said you can have access out of ungodly limitations because there are godly limitations. Think about it. We said this year, we have been speaking over this house and over those who hear us, that you can also have access out of ungodly limitations because there can be godly limitations. Half of all the trees of the garden eat of their fruits at any time. But of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. The day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Limit, limitless opportunities but within a boundary of do not touch. You can see it, you can pass by it, you may touch it, but you will not partake of it. Boundaries. So don't think every boundary is of the devil. <laughs> don't think the boundary that you cannot do certain things with your body, you cannot, the boundary that you cannot allow certain thoughts in your mind is of the devil. No. Anything that has no boundary is also invasion territory for the enemy. You become secure. You carry favor as a shield when you stay within godly, godly boundaries. May someone get that. May someone catch that. May someone be challenged by that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grace comes only from God. How God anointed Jesus. How God anointed Jesus. He couldn't anoint himself. How God anointed Jesus. He was son of God in heaven. He became son of man on the earth. He needed the source to bring grace upon him. Never imagine. Never think you are the owner. You are the custodian. You may be a channel. You may be a vessel. You may be a vehicle. But the source of the anointing is God. You want to be anointed for business. You want to be anointed for academic excellence. You want to be anointed with the attributes of wisdom. Like you find with Daniel. Daniel had uncommon level of wisdom. When you study Daniel chapter 5 from verse 11 to verse 14. Uncommon level of wisdom. He could dissolve doubts. He could give understanding to riddles. He could explain hard sayings. But they were all attributed to the spirit of God that dwelt in Daniel. What are we saying to us here in essence? One attribute of the grace of God is that he is the sole owner. You want grace? Call on God. You want grace? Access his presence. Because when you access his presence and his grace rubs up on your life, that grace can open doors for you on the earth. That grace can make you access the treasures of darkness. That grace can make you speak to ancient gates. Battles your parents fought and they were defeated in. Battles your generations fought and they could not, they could not overcome. By grace, you can stand against those oppositions. By grace, you can overcome ancient strongholds. You can break down ancient barriers. You can cut down ancient bars. You can break in pieces gates of iron. By grace. And understand, friends, that grace is given only by God. Paul said to the Ephesian Christians, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The grace that appears to all men, the grace that brings salvation to all men, it is the gift of God. Grace makes us to access eternal salvation, divine salvation. But it is not of our own works. It is not because you never touched a woman. It is not because you never smoked. It is not because you never cheated, you never stole. It is the gift of God. Look at this again, Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 8 to verse 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, regular church attendance, attending program of churches every day, everywhere, in every city, traveling by day, moving by night, you attend one church for day operations, you go to another church for night vigil, you move to the other church for the second day's activities. Not of works. 
lest anyone should boast. And put another way, Ephesians chapter 3, Paul writing again here from verse 7. Paul writing about himself and the grace that transformed a murderer, a religious zealot, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God. The grace of God made a servant of God, made an apostle of Paul, Saul of, and he that told Saul of Tarsus. He said, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power, not my eloquence, not my scholarship in Judaism, but the effective working of his power to me who am less than the least of the saints. I'm not worthy to be ranked amongst true believers. I'm not worthy to be ranked amongst religious people, Christians, less than the least of the saints. This grace was given. Do you feel unqualified? Do you feel disqualified? Do you feel set aside by men? If Paul was less than the least, if Paul was unworthy, I mean, to do anything for God, and yet grace qualified him, yet grace enabled him, yet grace elevated him, Friends, your case is not as bad. You can be a recipient of grace. Grace can grant you access into the mysteries of the kingdom. Grace will grant you access into the treasures of this life. Grace will grant you access to where kings deny you access. Because it is the grace of the almighty God. Look at this furthermore. To me who am less than the least of the saints, this grace was given. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages had been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known through the church to principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Paul was simply saying, I didn't qualify. My scholarship in Judaism disqualified me. I couldn't even rank amongst the least of the saints. I was less than the least. I was less than the least. Where the bar starts from, my situation was even less than that. But grace distinguished him. And I speak over this house. I speak over those online. May grace distinguish you. If God could raise, he wrote in another place in First Timothy chapter 1, you read from verse 12 to verse 15, he, he talked about how he was injurious to the faith. He was a murderer. He was unfaithful. But in God's faithfulness, he took him out and used him valiantly. I need to read that as I begin to close here tonight. First Timothy, I'm still reading about Paul. First Timothy. If Paul's life, Saul of Tarsus, could be so transformed, don't give up on yourself. Access grace, and great, mm, grace will give you access. Look at this. 1 Timothy chapter 1, from verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, meaning he has equipped me, he has empowered me. To enable is to be equipped and empowered. And what's the, what's the channel, what, 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 what's the tool of empowerment? Grace. He said, who has enabled me? Because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a, a blasphemer, someone who spoke against God, the ways of God, the person of God, the ordinances of God. Although formerly I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent, injurious to people, insolent, behaving anyhow, insolent man. He said, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Look at this further in verse 14. And the grace of our Lord Jesus was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Meaning, I, I am principal in the school of sinners, but the grace of God found me. May the grace of God find you. May the grace of God locate you. May the grace of God enable you. May you recognize it as, as the grace of God in the precious name of Jesus. So what's an attribute of grace here? Grace is given only by God. Furthermore, number two, grace is available to all who seek it or receive it. 
Sometimes we seek grace in order to get it. Sometimes in the sovereignty of God, he brings grace to us. But whether you are seeking it or God gives it, you are better receive it when grace shows up. Grace shows up in the revelation of Jesus. Grace is available to all who either seek it or much more who receive it. The grace of God is available to the prostitute. The grace of God is available to the madman. The madman at Gadara, he met Jesus. He responded to grace. The demons in him were driven out. He became a mighty evangelist. Uh, Mary of Magdalene. Mary of Magdalene. A lady possessed of demons. When he met, she met Jesus and responded to the embodiment of grace and received Jesus, she received grace. It transformed her life. Grace is available to everyone who seeks it consciously, intentionally, or who receives it when the sovereignty of God shows up. Are you still in here? Hello, friends. Are you still in here? You see in, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, he said, wherefore come boldly before the throne of grace. The throne of grace is the very presence of God. And it's called the throne of grace because there is abundance of the supply of grace in that location. Come boldly, therefore, seeing what Jesus has done, seeing the price he has paid, wherefore come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy on one level and also find grace to help you in times of need. The times of need are ahead of us in the course of this year. But grace is available in the presence of God. Grace is available to all who come. Grace is available to all who seek. Grace is available to all who respond and receive the grace of God. Hallelujah. I need to make progress here. Number four, grace can be accessed with God. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace. Grace, the moment you locate God, you locate the presence of God, you can access grace. Grace can be enjoyed when you locate God. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. You will see in Psalm 24, I mentioned a dimension of that in the Sunday service, three segments of Psalm 24. The first segment recognizing that the earth its fullness the abundance of the sea they are sourced from god they originate from god they belong to god first segment from verse one to verse two then from verse three to verse, verse five it begins to say who will now access this god who will be able to come before the maker of the heavens and the earth you want to access the treasures of the earth access god you want to access the treasures of darkness access god that's the essence of that son he says who will ascend who will abide in the holy place and he gives the conditions holy heart clean hands pure heart good deeds you don't take undue advantage of people and then when you access his presence you access the presence of the almighty as you come from that presence no matter the barrier, no matter the gate, no matter the, lock, uh, the lockdown, no matter the limitations of men, limitations from your background, limitations from your culture, you are able to dislodge them by this grace that we receive from the presence of the Lord. So grace can be accessed with God. You see in another Psalm, in Psalm 27, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It takes a man who has encountered God. It takes a person who has been into his presence. It takes a person who has engaged the presence of God and knows the possibilities and the potency of the presence of God to challenge ancient strongholds, ancient powers. He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies, even my foes, they rose against me to devour my flesh. They stumbled and they fell. But he went on to say, one thing will I desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may inquire in his temple and behold his beauty. Because when the enemies come, he will hide me. What that passage is simply showing us 
is that when you encounter that presence, when you locate God, you can handle life. You can gain mastery over life. Challenge in business, challenge in marriage, challenge in academics. When you locate God, let me read that. And then I think I will close here. Psalm 27. Pastor Chris Delvan Guamna sang the song, The Lord is my light and the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? <laughs> the Lord is my light and the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Awesome song. But look at this here, Psalm 27. Are you here? Are you alive? Are you well? Are you accessing the presence of the Lord? Psalm 27 from verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? This is a man who had tasted that dimension. He had tasted the presence of God. He had accessed God. He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When? Meaning, it's a matter of time, they will show up. If you are doing well, enemies will show up. If you are fearing well, if you are making progress, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. They will show up. Oppositions are bound to show up in this earthly pilgrimage. When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled <laughs> and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, not just a Sunday experience, not just a midweek experience, but a lifestyle for a lifetime. He said to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, marital trouble, business trouble, financial trouble, relationship trouble. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon the rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies. Can I have a believing amen in the house? Yeah. All around me. Shall we rise to our feet tonight? The Lord is my light and the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I'd like you to lift up your voice tonight and begin to thank God as we access that holy presence. Thank God for his awesome presence. Thank God for the grace that is available with him. It is not grace that is supplied in a physical location. He said they go from strength to strength. Everyone who appears in Zion before the Lord. Friends, that is not a physical appearance. That is a spiritual. You appear with your heart. You connect with your heart. You believe with your heart. And receive the awesome presence of the Lord. That you may gain access and mastery over the affairs of life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Lord, help me to access your presence. No matter your present estate, husband, wife, businesswoman, captain of industry, pray in this moment, in this atmosphere of a corporate release of grace, pray that you will possess grace, you will access grace. Grace to help in times of need. There will be physical needs ahead. There will be social needs ahead. Financial needs, marital needs, relational needs, needs for direction, needs for ideas. He said, find grace, find grace, find grace to help in time of need, in times of need. Pray for yourself tonight and pray that God will help you to access his presence and access the grace that is abundant in his presence. Pray online, pray online. Those online pray that God will enable you to access his presence. 
There is grace with God. There is transforming grace with God. The grace is available to everyone. People have disqualified you, but the grace of God can qualify you. Lord, help me. I need grace for my pilgrimage. I need grace for the journey of this year. I want to access new things. I want to access wisdom. I want to access grace. I want to access spiritual stature. I want to access breakthrough. I want to access financial empowerment. I want to access calmness in the midst of storms. Lord, help me to access you that I may receive grace to access advantage in life to enjoy favor to come to breakthrough to find advantage to find grace to help in times of need pray for yourself one more minute the lord is my light and the light of my life of whom shall i be afraid Shekabisi and Tobari Kaboshi. I receive help tonight. I I access the presence of the Lord. I access oh yes grace from the giver of grace. I come boldly. I'm not seeking mediums. I'm not seeking intermediaries. I come boldly to the very presence of the Lord. I come boldly to the throne of grace. I find grace to help, grace for access in times of need. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. On site, online, I speak for tonight the word of the Lord. May grace locate you. May you connect with the awesome grace of the Almighty. May the grace of God flow in your direction. May it produce the anointing. May it produce favor, may it produce favorable disposition of kings of the earth, of captains, of strangers towards you, towards your documents, towards your recommendation, towards your applications. In the name of Jesus. May you find transformation by this grace. May you access transformation by this grace. May you access elevation by this grace. May you access divine direction by this grace. This year, may the grace of God catapult you. May the grace of God throw you up. May the grace of God push you forward. May the grace of God take you from the middle of the queue and put you on the front of the queue. In the name of Jesus. You have been stretching your neck with this thing get to me. With the number of people ahead of me. With this thing get to me. I speak over your life tonight in the course of this year. Whatever cue life has placed you in. Whatever cue situations have put you in. May God of grace. May the God of grace take you from the middle. Take you from the backside. And haul you to the front of the queue. We decree it. And the spirit of the Lord establishes it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and bless the Lord tonight.